It's time to revisit the Farscape universe. In no particular order and no restraint on spoilers, these are the top 10 Farscape episodes. Number 1. A Human Reaction Only a short time into Season 1, and it appears that Crichton has returned to Earth. As he desperately tries to explain what he's seen and where he's been, the situation spirals out of control until Crichton realises that not all is what it seems. This episode is a great slow burn as Crichton uncovers the mystery of what has happened to him. The episode plays with your expectations, making enough sense to truly convince the audience that he may have returned to Earth, but also introducing enough oddities to keep us on our toes. And of course, the final reveal is creative and unexpected, kicking off THE Farscape storyline without us even realising it. Number 2. The Hidden Memory Crichton has been captured by peacekeepers and is brutally tortured by a mind-probing device. Meanwhile, Moya is giving birth to her offspring, but it's not a normal leviathan. The first appearance of Scorpius does not disappoint. As if Crace wasn't dangerous and unstable enough, here comes someone far more intimidating and terrifying. Although his costume may induce sniggers from the less mature, Wayne Pygram's performance quickly puts any concerns to rest. This is the first instance of the best kind of Farscape storytelling, a psychological emotional standoff between our hero and villain while adventurous space opera action whirls around them. Fans are ever thankful that the writers hit upon this winning formula. Number 3. Won't Get Fooled Again Crichton seemingly returns to Earth again, but he's not buying it for a second, especially when Moya's crew and Scorpius begin appearing as different people, and no one acts as though seeing aliens strolling around is strange. Just like before the entertainment comes from watching Crichton figure out what the hell is going on. But while before he was uncovering a dark conspiracy of sorts, this time the truth is obscured by surreal and comedic imagery. Rather than widespread galactic implications, this episode is just a lot of weird fun, and Ben Browder going crazy is always a win. Not to mention the beginnings of horror Harvey, yet another reason why Scorpius is such a great villain. Number 4. Liars, Guns and Money And now, the epic factor. In order to free Dargo's son from slavery, the crew decide to rob a depository of riches, but this soon brings them back into conflict with their old friend Scorpius. One of Farscape's greatest strengths is how the writing is able to make personal stakes between the characters seem huge. Ostensibly, the fate of the galaxy is at hand, but all the complex schemes and thrilling gunplay is centred firmly on the characters and their relationships. But as well as great emotional stakes, this is just pure entertainment. The depository has a cool design and a plethora of new and returning villains and anti-heroes round out the cast in a fulfilling way. It's exciting, action-packed, and loads of fun. Number 5. Die Me Dichotomy So here's most people's reaction to this season finale. In order to heal Moya and remove the neural clone from Crichton, the crew seek out an expert healer. While Moya's condition can be improved, the Scorpius clone begins taking over Crichton completely leading to a heartbreaking climax. Leaving Season 2 with one of the main characters dead, the protagonist a vegetable, and the villain having won is a surefire way to leave the audience speechless. Just when things are looking up for our heroes, the writers find a way to pull the rug out from underneath us and leave us pondering how the crew can ever recover from this. What truly makes this episode is the spine-chilling performance from Ben Browder as Scorpius and the gut punch of devastation he conveys as his normal self, an episode which leaves us hanging in the best and worst ways possible. Number 6. Self-Inflicted Wounds An alien ship emerges from a wormhole and collides with Moya, merging the ships and sending them careening through a distorted region of space. The mission to separate both ships is clear, but ambitions and secrets on both sides make this easier said than done. Once again, this is Farscape using wacky sci-fi to inform character. There are no strict villains in this episode. Everyone's motivation is understandable, but their methods in getting what they want would destroy the lives of those around them, and so characters must contend with each other as well as the chaos of the situation around them. And as if the personal conflict was bad enough, the episode has to cap it off with the death of Zan. And it's pretty much Crichton's fault, making the situation go from bad to worse due to his own selfish desires, but at the same time, desires that the audience completely understands. Few shows can tear an audience in so many mental and emotional directions like Farscape. Number 7. Incubator And now back with Scorpius. As test flights through wormholes continue to fail, Scorpius injects himself with the neural chip, meeting a clone of Crichton inside his own mind. Here we're shown Scorpius' childhood and we see how he became the person he is. While Scorpius has always been a great villain because of his personality and the plotting around him, here is our first glimpse into the depth of his character. It's incredible how quickly we can go from hating his guts to kind of rooting for him in such a relatively short space of time. And while we can never agree with him, by the end of this episode we at least understand him. Number 8. Into the lion's den. Crichton cuts a deal with Scorpius to help him figure out wormhole technology, with the secret intention of sabotaging the project. 
As the work continues under strained circumstances, internal politics within the peacekeepers force them into an impossible scenario until finally the choice is made to take it all down. This two-parter is characterized by great character development, escalating tension, and a crowd-pleasing finale. Anytime two enemies can talk instead of fight is great, and Farscape is masterful at making these situations happen. Having developed the slightest kernel of empathy for Scorpius, Crichton's plan continuously shifts with no real right answer or solution to the problem at hand. Meanwhile, Aaron and Crace interacting with their past lives as peacekeepers offers a wealth of great material for the actors, especially during the Command Carrier's destruction. Punctuated by the tragic self-sacrifice of Crace and Talon, the Command Carrier sequence is inventive and awe-inspiring. Sci-fi spectacle and emotional turmoil, the key ingredients of Farscape at its best. Number 9. Kansas After almost four years, Crichton finally returns to Earth for real, but in the past specifically to the 80s, where his disruption of the timeline will result in the death of his father. This is just a classic time travel story, a self-fulfilling paradox offering emotional riches and comedic fun as the alien crew attempt to fit into life on Earth. In a strange roundabout way, this return to Earth in a different time offers Crichton more emotional satisfaction than a straightforward return to his present. Just another clever way the writers get the most out of their characters. Number 10. We're so screwed. On a quest to rescue Eren from the clutches of the Scarens, Crichton and the crew of Moya are pulled into the ultimate standoff between the Scarens and the Peacekeepers, which could decide the fate of the galaxy. I'm just sounding like a broken record now, but all the compliments of previous episodes still apply to this one. This three-parter, the series climax in a way until the show was concluded with the Peacekeeper Wars, encapsulates all the great things that the writers of Farscape could do in their sleep by this point. The fate of the galaxy, space opera stories of empires and entire worlds resting on the shoulders of our characters and their relationships. No no other show so skillfully marries the two elements together. But Farscape did, and the result is a weird, funny, and epic saga punctuated by emotional turmoil and cathartic thrills. What are your favourite Farscape episodes? Did I miss them out? Let me know in the comments below. Until then, have a good one. See ya.